Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. There's been a lot of Battlefield 5 testing on the channel lately. Earlier in this week, uh, Steve looked at how Battlefield 5 performs with a range of GPUs. Then a few days ago, we looked at RTX performance, and hopefully we'll have something up on CPU performance shortly as well, though with Battlefield 5's annoying limits, that might take a little while. But in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to get the best performance out of Battlefield 5's regular settings without sacrificing too much from visual quality, similar to our previous game optimization videos. This video is going to be slightly different to our guides for games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, primarily because those games are single player focused, whereas most people are buying Battlefield 5 for the multiplayer. So the settings we're targeting today are designed to create the best setup for competitive play, namely high frame rates without the game looking like complete garbage where possible. So Battlefield 5 is quite well optimized. So there aren't a lot of settings where you can just tweak a few things and get free performance. A lot of what we're going to talk about will come down to trade-offs between quality and performance. Unfortunately, though, it does have that pesky five hardware change limit, so this did limit the scope of our testing a little bit. That said, we did manage to test Battlefield 5 across a small selection of GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia, and at both high-end and mid-range price points. All testing was done with our Core i7 8700K test system, overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and all footage you see in this video was captured at 4K using the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Though do note that the footage doesn't always correspond to the exact areas we use for performance testing. All frame rate numbers you see are from the same benchmark run, noting that there's you know, no in-game benchmark in this game. We also tested in the single player campaign only. This is because testing in multiplayer is a lot harder. In fact, it's basically impossible for any sort of repetitive accurate testing. But I did play a small amount of multiplayer and the results here do largely line up with what you'll see in many of the multiplayer maps. It's also especially important to note here that we were GPU bound for basically all of this testing. In this sort of game though, not everyone will be GPU bound. Depending on your CPU, the frame rate you're targeting, and whether you're playing multiplayer a single player, you could run into CPU bottlenecks. If you are CPU bound, you don't usually see a drop in frame rate when you increase quality settings, so tweaking things for your setup is ideal in that situation. Final note for this video, we recommend watching in 4K to avoid YouTube's compression as much as possible. We do have a source quality download available for our Patreons too. Links to that in the description if you want to see everything at a very high bitrate. So Battlefield 5 is a fairly simple game in terms of its quality settings. We have four basic presets, ultra, high, medium, and low, and nearly every individual setting also has those modes. So when you set the game to ultra, every setting is set to ultra, and when you go down to medium, all the settings also go down to medium. It's a nice and simple system. The two exceptions are the anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion settings. Those stick to TAA high and HBAO respectively for every preset except low, where they go down to the lowest setting. Before discussing the presets in detail, I do recommend a few basic settings outside of the presets for everyone to use. DirectX 12 has a few issues in this game, so I'd recommend sticking to DirectX 11. I'd also set the frame rate limited to its highest setting of 200 and keep future frame rendering set to on. This is a bit of a weird setting and does seem to reduce input lag when VSync is enabled, but for most people I'd recommend VSync disabled in this game and just let it run at the highest frame rate possible. In the basic settings, I also disabled every effect, including film grain and depth of field. I think that's best for a competitive multiplayer title. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the presets. With cards like the AMD Radeon RX 570 delivering above 60 FPS at 1080p with the Ultra preset, I reckon it's the go-to here for most gamers that don't want to optimize things further. It looks great, everything is maxed out, and it runs well on mid-range hardware. That's the sign of a well-optimized title, and DICE it seems to be delivering again here with Battlefield 5. Even 1440p games with something like a GTX 1070 can comfortably play above 60 FPS with the Ultra preset. So yeah, it's a pretty good one here. I don't see much reason to drop to the higher preset. There are some slight visual changes like small reductions to shadow quality, draw distance and foliage density, but it's not a huge downgrade. 
Then you move to medium and you start to see some effects falling away, in particular the lack of screen space reflections on water puddles, while low turns everything down to poo quality for the best performance. Looking at the performance breakdown, again, I don't recommend using the high preset because the performance increase in most situations is only around 5 to 10%. Steve tested in a slightly more demanding area than I did for this benchmarking and found a higher margin than this. However, I tested across several different areas with wildly different environments, and the results you see here are quite typical. And this makes sense because there's not a massive difference in visual quality. For those who want more performance, I'd just go straight to the medium preset. It provides 30% more performance than ultra and still looks so okay. I'd only recommend the low preset for those with entry-level hardware struggling to play at 60 FPS. It doesn't look great, though it does perform pretty well. Now let's move into the individual settings for a better look, and honestly there's quite a lot of changes you can make here if you want to target performance. If you're more after visual quality, just slap in an ultra and call it a day because performance is pretty good. If you have a high refresh monitor and want to target say 100 plus FPS, or just want the highest frame rate for the lowest input latency, you'll want to use a combination of ultra, medium, and even low settings to hit those high frame rates without having to resort to the potato quality provided by the low preset. First up, we have texture quality, and this is a setting that's a bit strange in Battlefield 5. It doesn't seem to impact the quality of most textures, particularly those close to the player, but that can depend on the area. There's also some weirdness here where the game uses very low quality textures for things like static vehicle wheels and wood, but then high quality textures for clothes and rocks. This mixture means in some areas the game looks great and in others looks pretty bad. I did spot a few loading issues too where high and low quality textures are repeatedly swapped. It's a bit distracting and I hope this is fixed in a patch. In terms of performance though, a very simple quality setting. You want to chuck it on Ultra unless you have a mid-range card that's starved of VRAM. In some areas like snowy environments, you do get higher quality textures and it's worth it for most players. Texture filtering is interesting because this is another feature we normally recommend people leave on the maximum setting, but in Battlefield 5 there's very little visual difference between any of the filtering modes at 4K. Going from ultra to low, you'll only spot a small reduction in clarity for a few on-screen textures, usually those at weird angles, and in a game where you're running around pulling headshots, honestly you probably won't notice the difference. That said, for those that do want to preserve texture quality, I'd keep it on ultra, but for anyone that wants to target performance, you can get a healthy 3% boost to performance if you chuck it on low, which is my recommendation here. There's not a huge quality difference between low and medium, so it's worth getting that extra performance and just putting the setting all the way down to low if frame rate is your thing. Lighting quality is an influential setting when it comes to performance as it controls the quality of shadows. The ultra setting has the sharpest, densest shadows with the greatest draw distance, and then with each quality setting drop, all three of those areas fall away. When you get down to the low setting, shadow draw distance for things like branches on trees is pretty pathetic, though it doesn't completely get rid of shadows like the lowest modes do in some games. When looking at performance, I almost have three recommendations here. Ultra has the sharpest shadows, so if you favor visual quality, it's the go-to. But if you're struggling for performance, the first change I'd make is to drop it down to high. Your frame rate will increase by 5% and the quality loss isn't significant. Then for those targeting high frame rates, the medium setting is my recommendation, providing 7% more performance than ultra with still acceptable quality. There isn't a large enough jump to performance to justify using low compared to medium, at least in my opinion. Effects quality is one of the more subtle settings in the game, and to be honest, I was only able to spot a change moving from high down to medium. This setting appears to affect how point lighting interacts with surfaces in the world, so on the high or ultra settings, a fire in front of a car can emit a glow underneath the chassis, for example. This glow disappears when using medium or low. Throughout our benchmark run, we observed a 3% uplift to performance using the medium setting compared to either high or ultra, so dropping effects quality down to medium is a good choice for those targeting performance. If you're more after visual quality, again, just chuck it on ultra. Post-process quality is the most demanding setting in the game as it controls whether screen space reflections are applied to water surfaces such as puddles. The main difference I spotted was simply whether SSR is enabled or disabled. With the medium and low settings, SSR is completely disabled, which results in no reflections on the surface of water, which is a massive visual downgrade. Ultra and high has SSR enabled, 
and honestly, I couldn't tell the performance between them. However, there is a performance difference between all four modes, which did surprise me a little bit. What was especially surprising is the 2% performance drop moving from ultra to high. Normally you expect to gain performance when decreasing a visual setting, but not in this case, and I triple check this result across multiple areas. So ultra is the obvious choice for those that want the best visual quality. If you want to gain a significant amount of performance, I'd suggest chucking this setting on low, skipping medium entirely. Your frame rate will increase by upwards of 15% with this setting choice. And while the game doesn't look as good, visually without water reflections, it's a really handy way to up your frames per second. Mesh quality isn't worth discussing as it has no real impact on performance. I'd keep this one on ultra unless you are running an entry level GPU that is struggling under a high geometry load. Terrain quality is one of those settings which has a nice balance between visual quality and performance. Each of the four modes does deliver a different terrain quality level and each also comes with a performance improvement. Ultra has the most dense terrain with the best draw distance and each of these aspects falls away with high and medium. Low basically flattens the entire terrain out, so it's not a setting I'd recommend. Looking at the performance breakdown, it's really a toss up as to which setting makes the most sense because each comes with a different visual quality. Those targeting quality will want to keep it on ultra I suspect, though for the best performance I drop it down to medium for a 2-3% performance improvement in frame rate. Low does improve things again compared to medium, but the quality drop doesn't seem worth the small improvement to performance. Undergrowth quality, like terrain quality, delivers a noticeable quality difference between each of the four settings. Ultra has the most dense ground level foliage, while low removes a lot of the grass and small plants around the environment. Note that trees, larger bushes and some of the leaf particle effects are unaffected by this setting. What setting to use really depends on how competitive you want to be in my opinion. Those that want the best visual quality should again opt for Ultra because it delivers the most dense environment, but some enemies could be partially obscured by the grass and foliage elements introduced by higher quality settings which would make them harder to spot. So for those that want to go full competitive, I would recommend dropping this setting to low, which I guess you also pick up a 4% improvement to performance in the process. This is really the only setting where the visual quality change from dropping to a lower setting could give you a competitive advantage. There isn't any other setting that simply removes objects from the game world. It's probably only a small advantage, but I'm sure it's one that some people would like to have. For anti-aliasing, we have two modes, both of which use Temporal Anti-Aliasing, or TAA. Luckily, TAA has come a long way in the past few years to the point where some of the better implementations are actually worth using. In Battlefield 5, the TAA High setting does a good job of smoothing out jagged edges without destroying texture quality, so it gets my recommendation. TAA Low noticeably blurs the image and reduces texture quality, and it, as it only introduces a 4% improvement to frame rate, I wouldn't bother using it. The final setting here is Ambient Occlusion, which impacts the self-shadowing and the general depth to the game world. Interestingly, DICE provides an SSAO option, but doesn't use it for any of the presets, instead preferring HBAO. And that's for a good reason, as HBAO delivers more depth than SSAO for a better image, while OFF, of course, removes Ambient Occlusion and leaves the image looking a bit flat. In terms of performance impact, opting for SSAO over HBAO delivers a performance improvement below 1%, so it's not worth using. I would, however, recommend switching ambient occlusion off for those that want to target frame rate. So after exploring all the quality options, it's nice to be able to validate that yes, the ultra quality preset is in fact worth using for those that want the best visual quality. There's no funny business here, DICE has created a series of ultra settings where the highest mode does in fact bring a quality jump, often at little cost to performance or at a cost that's in line with the visual improvement. There are no settings which unnecessarily tank performance when you flick them up to ultra, and that's great to see, especially as the ultra setting does look pretty great. That said, if you want to target frame rate over visual quality, there are a number of tweaks I'd make rather than simply sticking to the medium preset, which turns down settings like texture and mesh quality unnecessarily. For a nice balance of performance and visual quality, I'd recommend the following settings. Textures on ultra, texture filtering on low, lighting and effects on medium, post-process and mesh on ultra, terrain on medium, undergrowth on low, anti-aliasing on TAA high, and ambient occlusion on HBAO. These settings do reduce the visual quality compared to ultra, but your frame rate also increases by around 18% on average. And with undergrowth set to low, it should be slightly easier to spot enemies in competitive multiplayer, which is a nice bonus considering it rids the world of foliage density. With our RTX 2080 Ti, this was the difference between playing at mid to low 80s in terms of frame 
frame rate and up around the 100 FPS mark at 4K. Those with, say, a GTX 1060 are looking at an extra 10 FPS at 1080p, and it will ensure a card like the GTX 970 stays above 60 FPS. For those that really want to target performance, I'd suggest two further tweaks, setting post-process quality to low and ambient occlusion to off. Those extra changes lead to a 45% performance improvement over the Ultra preset, which is perfect for high refresh rate gaming, placing it between the medium and low presets in terms of performance. However, it doesn't look anywhere near as bad as the low preset. In fact, it looks pretty similar to medium, but with better textures and geometry, and again, reduced foliage density for that potential competitive advantage. Using these performance-based settings makes a card like an RX 580 suitable for high refresh rate gaming at 1080p, where it previously struggled to hit 90fps using the Ultra preset, it's now up over 120fps. And it's a similar story for the GTX 1070 at 1440p, which is great news for those that want to game with high refresh 1440p monitors. That said, in either case you'll need to make sure you're not getting CPU bottleneck. So yeah, overall I'm fairly impressed with the quality settings on hand here in Battlefield 5. The Ultra preset is decent. You can turn off a few things to gain large performance improvements without completely destroying how the game looks. So depending on whether you want visual quality or high frame rate gaming, there's something here for everyone. It's particularly nice that the effects like explosions and particles aren't heavily impacted by the quality settings, while typical settings like textures and mesh quality can be kept at high levels with little performance penalty. And of course, if you're interested in ray tracing performance, we have a separate video that's already up on the channel covering that. We recommend everyone leave ray tracing disabled though, if you are serious about playing this game at decent frame rates, especially even on the RTX 2080 Ti. That's it for this quality optimization video. There's been a few other game releases recently that I basically have to get to right away, namely Hitman 2 and Fallout 76, so I'm certainly very busy at the moment. As always, you can subscribe for more videos like this from us, particularly in the next few weeks. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to the source quality version of this video, as well as our exclusive Discord chat and monthly live streams, and I'll catch you in the next one.